first thing I'm going to do in dismantling this is just take down the A-pillar. And I'm going to take this weather stripping out of the way if I can. Actually, you know what? I can probably do this here. It just snaps right out. And then it just pulls out like that, like so. We'll set this guy out of the way. Now, what you got, I'll take you off the tripod. Now you got your overhead trip computer, your rear view mirror, and your sun visors. And all this headliner, you can actually already start seeing it here. Some of this headliner is going to run across here. So we'll get to it. And I'll just grab my tools and right. under each of your sound visors, or at least in the Rams, there's just three Phillips screwdrivers. And for this side here, it's just one Phillips screwdriver. So I'll get that there. Let me put you on the tripod. I love this camera quality. It's really good. I don't know if, well, let me try to get you at a good angle. That's gonna have to do. All right. It's one. Last one. It's gonna have to be out of the way. Alright, and that's out of the way, and now we'll get to, where are you guys at? Okay, I don't think, I don't think it's picking it up, but I'm pretty certain that you already know how to take these visors off. So after this one, I'll just cut the camera. I'm going to try to see if I could film the overhead console removal. A lot of people tend to get confused on this. So, like this, there's a garage door opener. And there's, there's, two, there's two tabs that you press down and you pull, it, you pull down while pulling back at the same time. There we go. That's disconnected. Uh, where did I say? Okay, so this isn't probably isn't the best way to do this, but I don't know any other way. Yeah, your overhead console's removed. Okay, and next is the auto dimming rear view mirror. I also need a tool for that as well. These rear view mirrors, whether the auto dimming or the generic type, you also there's a hex nut. Uh, Allen wrench is required for this and once you have the right size Allen wrenches it's fairly easy if you get like a multi kit like this you could just do trial and error with this that's what I always do when I work on cars like this pretty much any car not just this this will be disconnected and that's all the way now this can come out your odd dimming net rear view mirror is now removed All right, so now that's pretty much out of the way. Uh, I 
I wonder if I can pull out the weather stripping. Hopefully I can do that. Okay. It took me quite some time, but I finally got the new harness back up into place. Uh, the sockets are not gonna fit in the hole easy. As you can see, I just put it in, slid it over a little bit. Uh, problem, there's not really a problem. It's just, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work I had to do to it and it was not easy. Let me tell you, it was not easy work to do. So I have to make sure that this is shoved in here for your sun visor clips, your sun visors, so that they'll get power. One thing I definitely recommend doing before you start any any project on a vehicle, especially if you're going to cut wires, please disconnect the batteries at any times, even if it doesn't mess with the bus system. I snipped the wires that were running here that that were going here and I heard something from this and I turned my key on my gauge cluster still worked and my running lights still worked but my radio was my radio was not working and my overhead lights were not working so I don't know I'm hoping that I didn't shore anything out I either shorted something out there's a blown fuse or it simply just wasn't getting enough power because when I pulled it out when I re removed the electrical tape um, I did see uh, bare wires and maybe some copper strands were broken off, but I that doesn't explain why I would hear a noise from here and also the uh, radio would not work. So I'm hoping that will be fixed. I'm hoping I could get that fixed at some point. I tested the truck and it still starts right up. It's, it, sound, it sounds beautiful. It started right up after six days. So that's good. So that's just something I have to put out there. But yeah, I got the new harness pretty much in. I plan to snip the wires, snip the wires there, and then just feed it down this area. Pretty much put it to the same point. And I cut this right here. This is the snipped harness. That, like, I don't know what wires could contribute to that sparking, but I guarantee you it did not sound too good. So, I'm grateful that my truck still starts up. I'm now furious because my... Well, now it's not going to work because the batteries are now disconnected. But I disconnected batteries after the fact of either shorting something out, a blown fuse, or something. I don't know what it is. But that's pretty much what I had to do. So what I did, I didn't record a lot of it because I was, I, was, I was struggling. So I had to take these off. Those were just the screws. I took the overhead console, You've, I filmed that part. I don't think I filmed the auto dimming. It's just one of these, and you just pick trial and error, whichever one works for you, and that gets out of the way. One thing I did do this time, but not last time, was that I also took this off. Now I screwed up, this part broke. The only negative thing about these trucks is that the Dodge plastic in this thing, in these things are just very poorly made. And I, this is a split, so I could very easily just push it back. And I still don't fully understand how this is put together. But you pry this down, and then there's a screw that pulls down. And then you just slide it back. And what that does, that allows me to pull this side down more because this harness stretches across the entire headliner. Unlike the other one where it just went to the overhead console. So, and same thing here. I I looked at other truck forums. I looked at the routing of this and it's just my perspective. It goes here and it comes back around and therefore it goes into the hole for your sun visors. And also the scary thing is like this headliner is actually in very good shape and I don't want to screw it up. It's, I can replace it, but I don't want to have to spend extra money. So, that's just the status update. And other than the radio and the interior lights not working, everything seems to be going fair. That's just a, like, uh, gosh. That's another thing. The head, the headliner is just super old that, like, fuzz, that they're, like, fuzz parts. That if I mess with it too much, it, it lands in my eye. That's why you heard me do that. So I'll let you know when everything's uh, 
when I get further along down the line. One of the things that I had an issue with, and I explained it earlier into the video, is the temperature sensor, or like where this bracket goes. And there are other views, like as a summary of how they did this, but they never really explained it thoroughly. So that's the purpose of this clip in this video. So I'll just point everything out. And what I'm going to be using is like a, a kind of like a plastic rivet screw. I'm still not certain if this is going to work, but wish me luck on this. So this square latch, this lock, right next to this bolt, there are two smaller holes. The top one is for the temperature sender, or that's at least that's where Chrysler put it. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but it's basically like lined the, the hole up with the hole where the screw's supposed to go into. Up. Oh, it actually worked. Alright, so that's done. So, I don't know if the camera picked this up. So what that is, this square right here, there's a there's two miniature holes this I used a plastic rivet and I'm gonna have to get some tape or something to hold that down but to hold that into position but hopefully that'll that could be resolved but there's a hole that there's they're supposed to send you a screw for the temperature sensor but I couldn't find one so I ended up getting like a plastic rivet screw it's not really plastic but it's it's not like a metal screw and I just shoved it in there and it's holding it into place and then you just mount your put your wiring from your wiring from this connector and there are holes so you can use your plastic rivets for and then hook it up to here the second one is for my light and another thing this is another reason why I think it's a fuse that's blown the open sometimes it's a little iffy on engaging obviously it's not going to engage now because the batteries are disconnected but if it were hooked up if the batteries were connected sometimes it clicks on sometimes it doesn't but that's because I messed with this connector once sometimes I just give it a tap and it engages but I tried that with the batteries on it wouldn't engage another thing is I don't know if this really like, explains anything but my cargo lights don't work either, and I can live without the cargo lights because I never drive with them on, I never turn them on, but that that's, tells me that there's probably a blown fuse. I'd rather it be a fuse than anything, and also maybe a fuse through the radio that's blown as well, but that's pretty much, it's actually very simple, but the hardest thing was just finding out where it goes, and I finally figured it out, so I figured why not why not do a good service and explain all that